Today, we're going to be using player prefs to help us save and load game related data between scene loads and playthroughs. Player prefs is a built in Unity system. In this demo, we'll be saving the number of coins collected in a scene and loading that value in the following scene. This will allow us to keep track of the number of perpetual coins collected. And you can do the same thing for the number of points, coins, health, and a bunch of other things. With player prefs, there are three main types of data you can store. Integers, floats, and strings. And the way data is stored is through key value pairs. So you would associate the value with a key, like a string, like coins, or high score. In our demo, we will save the number of coins collected with a key of coins and store it as an integer. When the next scene loads, we will check to see if a player pref of coins exists and update our coin collected value. There are some limitations, mostly in the type of data. Again, only integers, floats, or strings and also limited in not being able to use different types of collections, like lists or arrays. But player prefs can be useful to store a moderate amount of data. They can be used beyond a single playthrough. So you can hold things like high score, total playtime, the user name, save points, and more. In a later video, we will explore saving and loading data from file which will give us a more robust set of possibilities. And also, a way to use objects that will hold game data that do not get destroyed between scene loads. Make sure you like and subscribe. Let's jump into it. Let's say that we have a scene where we have a character, Bob, our skelly, and Bob is able to collect the number of coins, which we're gonna represent as these little green guys. We have a simple script that all it does is check for a collision that has a tag of collectible. And when it does, we're going to increment an integer called coins collected. I have also an, a UI manager, which is quickly just grabbing the get coins method and representing that in the UI. You'll see that in a second. Character moves around and the number of coins collected inc increases. When Bob jumps up onto another coin, that number goes up. And in this current state, when we move from level 1 to level 2, we load and the number of coins resets. We're using the same set of scripts. I just move Bob into a different spot. But ideally, we want to maybe keep the number of coins we've collected overall throughout the game. How do we do that? I'm going to use player prefs. And in player prefs, there are a few basic commands. One is checking to see if a key already exists. Again, if in our demo, we're going to have a key called coins, which is represented as a string, and then the value of coins that we have. And so the number thing, number one thing that we want to do is use this has key command to check if a key already exists. When we grab a coin and the scene ends, we want to update that value in player prefs using the set float or set int or set string method. When we load the next scene, we want to use the get command. So we're going to use get int and grab the value that is stored in player prefs so that we can update our coins collected value. Some other commands that you could use are delete key or delete all. A reason that you might use the delete key is so that when you start a new game, you don't want to have the number of coins that you previously used. Or if you want to have an option in your game that resets all of the stored data. Username, the amount of plays that you've had, high score, you want to just nuke it all, you might use delete all. Let's go back into Unity. So let's just review our, our Bob character, which has our character collected character collections data and again we're using this coins collected inside each scene and we'd like this to perpetually have that data and we're going to use the player prefs to do it we don't need to use a namespace 
it's already built in. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a couple methods and we know that um, at some point we want to save our prefs. And so we're going to write a void save prefs method. And what that does is it's just going to take the value of our coins and save it to a player pref. We're going to call the player pref and we're going to use the set int because these are going to be whole number values including zero and we're going to assign it to a certain key. As soon as I open up the parentheses you can see that the method is looking for a key that's represented through a string and an integer value. So we're going to give it the key of coins and then we're going to set it with the value which represents the coins collected when we play that scene. And what this does is going to save, set the player pref of coins with the number of coins collected. We could also say player pref save at this time if you wanted to. So that's going to save the player pref that we just updated with. And that's great because then when we load the next scene, we know that player pref will hold it. So the other half of it is, is when we start the next scene, we want to be able to grab that data. One last thing that we want to do, this method is not calling itself. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the on destroy method, which is a Unity built-in method that whenever an object gets destroyed, and objects do get destroyed when we load or unload a scene, um, that we want to be able to call the save prefs. So when this level one gets unloaded, we want to call player prefs so that we save the number of coins. Now, since Bob is still using this character uh, collection script in the next scene, we want to be able to recall the number of coins that we've collected. And so we'll use the avoid on enable. So when an object it gets enabled or enters the scene, um, we're going to grab the number or the value from the player prefs. And in this case, we're not using set int, but we're going to check to see if a key exists first. So we're going to say player prefs dot has key. And we're going to be looking for the coins key. And we're going to create this, turn this into a conditional to say that if this key exists, then we want to do something. We're going to do the complicated version first. We can do a simplified ternary operator in a second. So we're going to say if player prefs has a key of coins, then we want to grab that value. And then we want to assign it to this coins collected variable. We want to update this value with player prefs. Oops, player prefs dot get, get int. We know that the key exists, so now we can grab the int of coins. And so it's going to set whatever value is in our key value pair of coins and assign it to our coins collected here. If we're using this method here, we want to disable, comment out this line of code because we're just this would just override itself. We're using this player prefs to give us the value of coins, whereas normally we would just set it to zero when we started entering the game. Make sure that if you're using this thing to comment this out or delete it. So let's try that. I'm going to enter the game and we're going to be level one. We can check Bob's value of coins. And in my previous demo, I already collected two. So we know that this thing is already working. Let's go and grab two more coins and then enter level two. We have three coins collected now. Let's go and grab a fourth coin and we're going to jump into level two. When level two starts up, we can see that we now have four coins. It's working. And we can see that four coins are collected here. And so this is nice because then we can go and move on to other scenes. And if we continue to use this set method of checking to see if coins exist and updating our coins collected variable, then we will slowly continue to add and grab that value every, scene, every single time that scene loads. Let's do this and let me demonstrate one last thing in that we're 
we're storing the number of coins we collect, but imagine this to be maybe a high score of points. If we stop playing, the number of coins that we have is still going to be saved. And so we can figure out ways to, to reset it if we want to, but note that I'm going to stop playing using this play button. And right now we've collected six coins. The next time that we load up Unity or playing, even though we're level one and not level three or five, that value is going to be recalled again. And we're going to start out with six coins. So this is nice in that we can do things like high score and other things like that, total play time and stuff like that. It may not be practical for coins. So how might we reset this if we were playing our game? We could go to maybe our first scene, our main menu. And when we start the game, we can set, we can have a game manager or something like that call the player prefs to set the coins value to zero as soon as we start the game because maybe all values should start at zero um, but right now let's not do it and we know that if we hit this button or if we hit play coins are going to be six if we come back to our main menu when uh, let's hit save if we hit the start button then maybe we want to reset everything so we, we might associate a button press we're going to do this sort of quick and dirty and we're going to create a real quick script and we're going to say that we're going to set reset prefs and you could reset a whole bunch of different player prefs here you should likely put this on another object other than the button object itself we can quickly lose track of things like that and normally we might just put it onto a different object so why don't we do that real fast we're going to create a new object and this could be uh, some type of manager and on that manager is going to be the script that we called reset prefs. I'm going to eliminate the one that exists on this object here. So it only exists on this manager. And we will drag in the manager into a new click spot. So whenever we click on this thing, we want to pull this up like this. And we're going to be looking for a method that we write inside this reset prefs. So right now, whenever we click on our button, we want to call a specific method. We don't need start or update. And this is just going to reset the coins value. We're going to make this public because the button system, event system needs to be able to see it. It's not going to return anything. And we're going to call this um, reset pref. Oops. Pref. Prefs. You may not like this. Let's say that reset pref values. And what we're going to do is we're going to address the player prefs again, that static class, call their static method of, um, we could say delete all, we could do that. And that's going to delete all the keys. Another way that we could do this is, that's probably the simplest way, just nuke everything as soon as we start a new play. If we want to delete something specific, then we could name that one by saying player prefs dot set int and call coins and set that to zero. Again, the top one is going to nuke them all. This other one is going to set coins pref to zero. Let's comment out this one. Let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. We're in the main menu, which should load us when we hit start to take us into level one and we're hoping to see coins oh coins six what do we do wrong there it might be the order that we're calling stuff so let's go and jump back in here do a couple things let's do player prefs dot save and see if that does it we might be loading the scene as we're doing this and it didn't have time to save that those values so let's go ahead and do that now. Still not there. Let's try this one. Interesting. Why isn't this part working? Set in, set coins, set 
Oh, I know why. Uh, we didn't call the button press. So we go back over here and we didn't call the set ref reset prefs. And where is this at? We go to reset pref values. Let's go back into here. I was wondering why this wasn't working. It should be working. So delete all. hit play coins are set to zero so the delete all does work as long as you're calling it in the event system let's do the other one that we had prototyped let's go to this one set coins to zero hit play coins to zero so both of these methods work Great, I hope you found this video helpful. Next video is going to be about having perpetual data linked to an object that doesn't get destroyed. Um, and then we're going to be talking about things like um, singletons as well. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'll talk to you later.